We are back here at a rather wet and drizzly late in Orient training ground and we're here for episode 12 of the O Show. Now, let's get in the dry and crack on with the show. Here we go. Right, we have got another jam-packed episode for you today. We've got some rather exciting news coming out of the social media, which we're going to have a little look at later on. We're just going to be chatting with Justin Edinburgh ahead of Saturday's game against Maidstone. And Ken T's got some big news as well regarding our historic fourth kit. But first, let's have a look at the highlights and all the action from Saturday's 0-0 draw against Hartlepool. Right, now, the big and exciting news coming out of the official Leighton Orient FC Twitter account. I think you West Ham fans will be pleased to hear this. They've put that feeling when you sell season ticket number 4,000. That's it, we have hit 4,000 season tickets. What an unbelievable effort. That is season ticket sales that would be impressive in League One or two. So massive, massive, well done <laughs> to everyone and the fans, thank you. And however, that does mean bad news for at Joe underscore Pavitt, who promised that if we hit 4,000 season tickets, he would scrub every seat in the West End. Now, he's doing that this week, so let's go and catch up with him and see him in action. Put on Twitter when we was about 3,200 season tickets in. That if we reached 4,000 season tickets, I'd come and clean the entire West End, and that is, that's including the, the dugouts, the gallery, and the balcony. And I think it was announced on Tuesday that we reached 4,000 season tickets. So here I am, sticking to my word. <laughs> this is where the gaffer sits. Uh, Yes, when we beat Avon and Waterlooville next Saturday, you can thank me for cleaning Justin's seat. He is an incredible figure. Uh, it just goes to show that we've got some of the best fans in London, some of the most loyal London fans. And I, f I think this really does prove it. I wouldn't be here cleaning 2,900 seats if it weren't for them. I've spent what four and a half hours now here cleaning seats, and I know I know I would much rather be at home. Up next we have. I'm thinking this is a Welsh man name, it's David Elias at El Coado. He put Tati by London, I'm guessing that's a Welsh term there. Just got on the train to head back home again. Game ended 0-0, so we didn't get the result we wanted, but River loved her first Leighton Orient match, so all is well in the world. And there's a lovely picture of River and David wearing their pink Orient kits. I'm glad you enjoyed Saturday, it was a fantastic day. Free beer and owe nuts, it was great, absolutely great. So here I am with Leighton Orient's head coach in the boot room, Justin Edward. Justin, lovely to have you on the show finally. Thank you very much for having me on. First, first appearance with me, I think, I isn't think it? It is, yeah. I've, I've admired from afar. <laughs> Watched some of your drills. Oh, uh, I don't think you've been admiring them then. Well, 
But he did alright shooting. Uh, I couldn't say I was impressed by the, uh, the goalkeeping. Yeah, I don't think anyone was. I don't think anyone was, to be fair. <laughs> Room for improvement, as they say. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, I've, got, I've got to just have a little chat about the video that's gone somewhat viral <laughs> last week, in, including yourself, uh, Ross Hamilton and Danny Webb. That was, it was stuff of brilliance yeah. there. Took us through. You must be good to have them to them characters you can see it in the No, they're, they're, they're good guys. I think, um, first and foremost, on a professional basis, they're, they're, they're young, enthusiastic, and very high quality coaches. Yeah. Um, really pleased to, to be working with them, um, you know, far in their work, and, you know, as, as a group, yeah, it's, it's what we do. We, yeah. we work hard, but obviously, you can see that around the place, there's a real good film atmosphere at the minute. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Knows much more than what we see with Mr. Webb and Mr. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, no, it does it come across. Felt like we was back in the classroom at school. And, uh, <laughs> I thought I removed remove myself before I was asked to leave. Yeah, no, that was pretty <laughs> probably for the greater good of the of the video. You don't have a croissant with you today, do you? No, no, no. no I'm going to put it on you, mate. Good, You're right. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Let's have a little look over the season so far. You know, we sit third in the league. Um, we had the club's best ever start. Being the manager responsible for that must must have been a good season for you so far. Yeah, I think you know what we what we look at is I think since I came in and we and we come together as a group and I mean that myself, my staff, all of my staff, um, and, and the players. Yeah, it's been a um, been a really good sort of coming up for 10, 11 months now. Mm. And um, you know I think what we did is there wasn't a lot of change at the end of the season. We added two. I think a lot of people were a little bit. Oh, well, we needed more yeah. signs. We needed big change, but you know, I think from from me working with these players every day at the latter part of, of the season and going into the summer, that I had a real belief in the group. And I think mm. you know, with with the continuity we've had, we, we've we've took that into the season. And I listen, it's um, I'm very proud of of the achievements of the players and 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 the staff of of putting that run together yeah. and, and breaking the record, but. Like I say, I think it's given us a platform, and we needed that platform because of you look at the other teams up there. They've, yeah. they've had a it's fantastic it. runs themselves. There's a lot of work to do still. There is, there is, but what we have would give ourselves a chance. Yeah, yeah. With the likes of Wrexham, who since second and Salford, who were top, have yeah. obviously spent a lot of money this season. It, it's gonna be tight by the looks of things come the end of the season, isn't it? Yeah, we believe so. I think um, we 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 had a. Uh, a teams in our head that we thought that would yeah. be in there. There's one or two that have surprised us with, with the position they are in yeah. at the top and there's been a couple that have surprised us that haven't quite got going as yet but as we know I think you know if you looked at the table this time last year I think Woking was sitting second or third mm. ended up you know falling out the, out the division so um, I think what we've we understand is um, every game that we approach we want to win yeah. but we can't be expected there's no given you know, I think we've seen that the weekend with Dover going to Harrogate and, and nearly snatching a win. Braintree again going and to... Nearly getting that win. So we, we, we're fully aware if, if you're not quite at it and you're not on it. But we, I think what last season gave... I, I, I was pretty much aware of what this division yeah. holds. But I think some of the players were perhaps unaware. Uh, and I think that gave us an opportunity to see what was out there. And you say you, say you do go to every game in, with the aim to win. And you can see that because looking back to Saturday's game, it was a nil-nil, but it still means that only the one lost this season. What do you think of um, Saturday's performance? It was a good day, but not all three points. What do you, uh, what did you take from Saturday? I think first and foremost, I think everyone at the football club needs to be congratulated on, mm -hmm. on the whole day of itself. You know that the, the presentation of, of what was put on for the fans. Yeah. I think on and off the pitch. Was was top class. I think the attendance speaks volumes. You know, I think it was only three League One. Yeah, I think it was the high. Wasn't it the highest in English football in competitive English football that day? I thought I read somewhere. I, no, I think that was three. I, was it? I think it might have been three other. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, three, I think Barnsley, Oxford, and, and, and one other. I mean, okay. We're talking about yeah, you know, League One, top top end League One. So I think you know, first and foremost, we we take uh, great pride out of that. Yeah, and, and I think. For me, it's quite overwhelming for the players as well to see that many people in a stadium. Mm. Um, but I thought that gave us the platform and the arena to go and, and perform. And I thought it was a good, good bounce back from our home defeat against Sutton. Um, and you know, I thought it was a team that 
that looked to win it and was looked we, like the only team that was going to win it. But unfortunately, you know, on the day we just couldn't quite capitalise on a couple of the chances that, that ran our way. Because we did, we, we looked on top and strangely, we looked on top most after that red card. Um, well, the stadium erupted, I felt, the players really reacted well and, and you made a couple of changes, took us through uh, that situation. Yeah, I, th- I think as, as knowing the group as I do um, and the players that we had, I, I just felt that to go at four and at the back and, and only have one up front, I thought that was going to invite Hartlepool onto us. Yeah. I think that's, you can only um, ask your players what they're capable of and I knew that they were capable of taking that game to Hartlepool with ten men. So you did you switch to a back three? With yeah, we, we went to a back three. Uh, kept kept the four across the middle yeah. and, and two up top and I, and I think obviously listen it nearly worked to the yeah. fact that we got three we, you know we, we certainly took one out of the game and um, listen it's about the players it, you know yeah I I, I, I stand I make the decision they've got they've got to fulfil it and uh, they they certainly I mean listen I think in them last thirty minutes it was something like we had nearly fifty nine percent possession. Oh really? That tells you. Yeah, you uh, could you could yeah. you could tell how long something. I just unfortunately that that we just couldn't get that one to go in. And the end, looks, I think the fans did every day everything they could. Yeah. To to suck it in, but you know, it, it, but I think we you know I certainly took a lot of pride out of out of my team. Yeah. Performance no, but it was that, it was for a nil nil. It was it was a yeah good watch and a great day. But now we look towards uh, Saturday's game against Maidstone. They are a league uh, opponent of ours, but it's in the FA Cup fourth qualifying round. Must be nice to have a little break from the league and focus on the cup competition. Yeah, no, I, I think the players uh, are, are really looking forward to it. I think um, for me, it's a competition with huge amount of history, yep. uh, great prestige, and um, one that we we as a players and staff and as club want to have a have a good run in. I know the fans will. Um, so again, like I say, it's a game that we go wanting to win. We'll put a team out there that we we feel that can win the game. It's um, yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a this distraction, just a little bit of a change from, from week in, week out of, of like we've said we've got to the middle of October now and uh, you know we've already sixteen games in the in a third of the way through the season. So mm-hmm. it, yeah it's a it's a nice nice challenge in a in a different way. Yeah, because um, as well a good cup run could complement a um a league campaign, can't it? Looking back to last year we, we went quite far in the trophy, losing out to Gateshead so so harshly, but yeah. that coincided with probably the best run in the league as well, didn't it? I believe you want to keep the momentum you have. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't want to get knocked out of the competition. I mean, I know that people say, well, you don't need the distractions. It's more games, but you know, I think my players showed how fit they are on Saturday. You know, yeah. they're, 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 they're you know they overrun eleven men for for thirty minutes, not five ten. That's for, for, good for a good thirty that. minutes. Um, and I, I know the players, as a player, you'd rather play than train. Mm. So the added extra fixtures, if they come along, yeah, they, they won't phase us. Like I said, we've got a fantastic squad here that are capable of dealing with two games a week. Mm. Um, so I, I think a good run keeps momentum. Fantastic for everyone connected with the football club. And, and looking at that fantastic squad you, you're talking about, how are they looking ahead of Saturday's game? I know we're obviously going to be without Joe. But how, how are the rest of them looking? Any knocks? You can give us some updates on? No, we're, we're, we're good to go. We've trained today, uh, Monday, Tuesday. Everyone's been out on the training ground. Um, so, no, it's it's been a good week. Okay. I think, um, you know, the, 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 the position I'm in now is getting the balance right of, of making sure the team that goes there is the team that can go and get us through the next round. Um, and in mind of... Uh, making sure that the squad is utilised to its maximum. Is Big George fit? Ella yeah, Kobe? yeah, George. Yeah, he's had a, he had a bit of flu at the latter part of last week. But, okay. um, yeah, no, he, he, he's all good. So, um, yeah, apart from apart from Joe Williston, we've, we've got a full squad to select. Nice. Well, good luck for Saturday's game. Thank Hoping we can get ourselves into that first round, get ourselves in the hat. Hope so. Yes, and mm-hmm. thank you for joining us today, Justin. It's been a pleasure. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now we have a very exciting and exclusive bit of news to bring you now, but I'm going to leave it to our fantastic chairman, Kent Teague, to tell all. Over to Kent. The main reason that we had the kit made was because we know that history matters. 
And Leighton Orient Football Club has really just a fantastic history over a very, very long period of time. And we knew that it was historically significant that it would, had been 100 years. And so we wanted to offer a way for the fans to be able to wear a piece of history that we felt like was very significant to them. That is it for another episode of The O Show. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Justin and Kemp for joining us today, and also a big thanks to Joe Pavitt for making our West Stand seats all shiny and new. Thank you for watching as well. Have a good weekend, and up the O's. Mm -hmm.